Hey everyone, it's Julie. Today I wanted to dive in a little deeper on something I touched on in my last video. Is grass-fed meat and dairy better for human and environmental health? And of course, I think we know the answer. Uh, yes, it is. <laughs> This was based on an article that I found in the last video stating that regeneratively and grass fed and kind of more naturally raised beef and meat and dairy products as well is healthier for humans as well as the planet. This was the article that I was referring to in my last video, and it does say that circumstantial evidence supports the hypothesis that phytochemical richness of herbivore diets enhances biochemical richness of meat and dairy, which is linked with human and environmental health. However, I do want to point out that this article does not definitively talk about meat and dairy being more rich in these phytochemicals, but there have been other studies. This one, for instance, says that there's emerging data that indicates when livestock are eating a diverse array of plants on pasture, additional health promoting phytonutrients, terpenoids, phenols, carotenoids, and antioxidants become concentrated in their meat and milk. Now, there haven't been a ton of studies on this subject, but I did see in my Google search that there are more coming. So we definitely need to stay tuned to those. So as you can see, this article speaks favorably about grass-fed beef and milk coming from grass-fed cows. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about other kinds of meat. So the whole concept of meat and animal foods being bad for you is kind of a little flawed. It's kind of like me saying, plant foods are bad for you because plant foods are in a lot of junk food, right? You, you get like a chocolate bar and besides maybe the milk, it's mostly plant foods, plant oils, chocolate comes from plants, nuts come from plants, sugar comes from plants. So could I deduce then that plants are bad for you just because of the way we've put them together into a chocolate bar or chips or any of that, of that kind of stuff? That doesn't really make sense. Bye. In the same way, all meat is not the same. Commercially raised meat is not the same as grass-fed beef, for instance, or I'm gonna argue wild-caught fish or other things like that are just not the same. You can't equate them to each other. And especially, you know, the more you take them and do different things to them, overcook them, like really char them like crazy or do stuff like that, or process them, right? Processed meats are on the carcinogenic list. Whether or not that's valid is maybe another discussion, but the more you do to them, the more I would say you may be taking away their benefits and reducing them to something that is more junk food-like. But grass-fed beef, for instance, contains a lot of the phytonutrients that plants do because the cow is eating them. And so we get a lot of the properties from these phytonutrients from beef as long as it's fed its natural diet. Now, I will mention here a lot of commercially raised beef is grass fed for most of its life. A lot of it is grain finished, which then may change the fat composition. But I would say beef is kind of one of the better meats to eat if you can't get grass fed and grass finished. Grass fed beef also has better omega-3 to 6 ratio. It has higher omega-3 and lower omega-6 in comparison to commercially raised beef. And it's also lower in fat generally, so you're not going to get as much of the fat if you're worried about it. Uh, I personally don't really worry about cholesterol and saturated fat, but if you are concerned about it, the grass-fed beef is going to be leaner technically. But moving on to, let's go to fish for instance. So wild-caught fish is not the same as commercially raised farm fish. Farmed fish is higher in omega-6 than the wild caught variety. And so when you're eating farmed fish, it's not that you're not getting the omega-3s because you are still getting tons of them. And I think that's why pescatarians still do really well on like Adventist studies, for instance, in terms of longevity and stuff, is because 
fish is still pretty good balance of omega-3 to 6. Maybe I should go into that a little bit more. So omega-3 and omega-6, the reason we like to keep a good balance of the two is because they compete for the same enzymes to be uh, broken down and used in the body. And so if we're putting both omega-3 and omega-6 into the body at the same time, and you know they're both using the same ones, one's gonna win out and one's gonna lose out. And if we're putting tons of omega-6 in and not a lot of omega-3s, you may not be able to use a lot of those omega-3s. So that's kind of one of the reasons they want the balance. But moving on to, let's say, pork and chicken. So pork and chicken, pretty much it's very hard to get non-grain fed pork and chicken. Personally, I've never been able to really find it except for Brad Marshall does produce pork. He's he's the guy from Fire in the Bottle. He has a website and he he's the one who did the croissant diet. I don't know if you've seen my other videos about that, but that's very interesting. And I would definitely check out Brad Marshall and his croissant diet and how he lost weight eating croissants. But he raises pigs as well, and he has managed to get their fat, omega fat composition to a much better level by feeding them um, a much better diet. The problem is we rely on grain so, so, so much. And then you're gonna get a lot of stuff maybe you don't want in your meat because it's being fed grain. Like maybe you don't want a lot of phytoestrogen in your meat from you know soy or from different grains and you're going to be getting that more if your animals are fed uh, a grain-based diet. In terms of chicken, if you eat the chicken breast, it's not that high in fat and you're probably, it's kind of more comparable to I would say commercially raised beef just in terms of the omega-6. So I would say if you do consume chicken, get the best you can, you know, pastured if possible and preferably breast and then just add in fat in other ways if you you know it tends to be kind of dry so cook it in grass-fed butter if you can afford it or even just regular butter the thigh meat is going to be a lot higher in omega-6 so if you're concerned about that which I think there is reason to be concerned about too much omega-6 in the diet because it can be inflammatory in the body and it's not ideal, right? You wanna keep that balance. So that's the issue to me with just lumping meat and animal products into one big category is definitely very black and white thinking. It's not nuanced enough to have a clear picture of what's going on. And this is probably why more and more people are thinking that you have to give up meat in order to be healthy. And that's just not the case. Keeping some of these really nutrient dense foods like fish, salmon is so nutrient dense and it's going to give you a good amount of vitamin D, especially for folks like me who live in uh, northern climates. You need that vitamin D. And red meat is great a great source of iron and other other nutrients that you're going to really need. So I don't think giving these things up and replacing them with supplements is the ideal solution. And I don't think, like it's obvious, plants don't have the nutrients that these foods have. So giving them up completely, it just doesn't make sense to me. And I think it goes without saying, meat has a more absorbable form of protein. It's satisfying to eat. It keeps your blood sugar more stable when you're eating high protein and fat foods with your meals and so it just makes a lot of sense to have some meat in your diet and enough to get your nutrients if you haven't seen my video on why i don't just eat a little bit of meat i eat enough to get my nutrients you can check that one out we need to open the conversation about the differences in animal foods and lumping them all into like a unhealthy food category and why this is just really not a sensible thing to do. And I believe it's actually going to cost people their health. And just a, a little disclaimer here, not everyone can afford grass-fed meat, wild-caught fish, and all this kind of stuff. And I still think these animal foods are healthy for you. And I think that like beef, uh, chicken breast, and even just regular farmed fish, adding those to your diet is still gonna get you a lot of the nutrition and it's not 
it's not like the end of the world if you have to eat commercially raised animal food products, okay? So I don't want people freaking out being like, oh, I have to buy a grass fed, but I can't afford it. And what am I gonna do? No, just keep doing it. Keep buying what you're buying, but I would focus on the beef, the chicken and fish. All this to say, <laughs> we need to rethink our conversation. And there was a really good paper that I was reading that was saying that we're putting all this emphasis on meat products, on animal products, when we all know junk food is like a huge issue in our society. And really, if people could just give up their junk food, they would be so much healthier. So that's another paper I will show here. So just to be fully transparent, some of these authors do have associations with Canadian Pork Council, Canadian Beef Inc., etc. But I do think that this article is worth reading. They do make some good points. And just to quickly go over the highlights, dietary advice to limit red meat is unnecessarily restrictive and may leave unintended health consequences. Overzealous focus on limiting red meat may have distracted from effective nutrition strategies to address chronic diseases. And with increasing intakes of highly processed food, it's important to reconsider nutrition priorities. And I have to agree with all of these points. And if you want to read the article, I'll link it down below. Okay, that's it for me. Take care.